appeared to be elusive on that play as I believe Edwards and Cecil Caldwell could not get the stop, but they bring Zolman well short of the first down. Charlie Strong's getting after Columbus saying, don't miss an opportunity like that. So they're forcing the punt. Joe Webb back on the punt. About the same field position as before. It goes inside the five-yard line, and now it's going to roll back, and Vanderbilt over to down it on about the seven-yard line for Carolina. So tough field position again. The Gamecocks will start on the seven. Vanderbilt doing their job. That's a great punt down the seven-yard line, but going back to the last defensive play, Kalimba Edwards has to make that play. If he wanted to step up tight and be the next John Abraham, be a top draft pick in the NFL, because believe me, scouts are at these football games, and they see plays like that, a big guy who's rangy and strong. He's got to have strong hands to be able to grab that quarterback and snatch him down, because sacks really don't come that easy. No, they don't. And of course, the quarterbacks only get bigger and quicker as you get to the NFL. That's correct. Phil Petty off to a little bit of a slow start. Three of eight as he's throwing a bunch away, but now we will go back to Andrew Pinnock, who's Shows a nice spin move in order to pick up six yards on the play. Check that, three yards on the play on a first and ten. And we've got a Vanderbilt player down on the play. There's your total yardage. Look at that. After that first five-play drive for Vanderbilt where they just went through Carolina like nothing, hard to rack up those kind of numbers. Back the eye formation. Andrew Pinnock got some room. Pretty good blocking there is Shane Hall subbing for Cedric Williams. As we end our first quarter, 7-7 seven to seven is our score from Nashville, Tennessee. There's our stat. We mentioned Phil Petty's number. One fumble by Vanderbilt, but no turnovers to this point. Call 1-800-256-8535 and show your support for Carolina football coverage on ETV by making a contribution to the ETV Endowment of South Carolina. Again, call us. Make your pledge of support. 800-256-8535. In Columbia, 256-0222. We start our second quarter play from Nashville, Tennessee at Commodore Stadium. It's Andrew Pinnock and the All-American Jamie Winborn meet. My goodness, that's two guys that weigh about 245 pounds. Winborn, consensus All-SEC linebacker, potential All-American. Great hit to still Carolina gets the first down, but that's the All-American from Vanderbilt. He, he shows you why right there. He flew up in that hole and laid a pretty good lick on the bus, but does not stop the bus from getting the first down. That's a good point. I mean, Andrew did not stray from his initial approach to the line and fail to get the first down. He booms his way in there. That's he correct. He may have felt it a little bit, but he got it. He got the first down. That's all that matters. The first and 10 for Carolina. They go back to finish. He again runs hard and is again met by some strong opposition. That's Bradford, the other linebacker. So Vanderbilt LB is taking a turn at Andrew Pinnock, who subbed quite substantially in the first quarter for Derek Watson. I believe that's Derek back in the game now, and Vanderbilt sliding all over their front. Phil Petty going to the air, and he gets Brian Scott. He turns it up the field and gets a block from Ryan Brewer. Nice play that time, and a good throw by Bill Petty on the play, complete for 12 yards. That's going to be open every week for the Gamecock receivers. They're big, they got a wide body, they're tall and they're rangy, and those little slant patterns are going to be open all day because they're so wide and they can shield those little cornerbacks off, especially on that spread pattern. Surprised a little bit, Corey, by the amount of pressure that Vanderbilt's bringing. They're almost daring them to throw to those big wide receivers. Sometimes it's hard when the pressure's on you so quickly. First and 10, under four seconds. Play action, Derek Watson across the middle. Is it complete? To Carlos Spikes, no. Carlos cannot hold on. 
as June makes a big hit. You can see here a great window for Petty to throw the football to Spikes right here, but, but a great play by the defender. He gets his, his hand right there on the ball, knocks it out from Spikes. Denies him the first down. Petty will have to get it this time. He goes to Atkinson who drops it. And unfortunately, that's why we see Willis Ham in the ball game getting the start this afternoon for Carolina. James has just flat out struggled. He's an All-American in junior college. And he has dropped two potential touchdowns in the last two ball games. And it's his first opportunity against Vanderbilt and lays it on the ground. Well, when you're struggling, that's not the way you want to start the game. And what Atkinson has to do is to put all the, those things in the past behind him and look forward to, to what's going to happen for him in the future. He's a great player with great talent, but he got to keep his head in the game mentally. Third and ten. Let's see if they can pick it up. Pressure. Phil Petty gets it away, and the guy we just mentioned, Willis Ham from Spring Valley in Columbia, South Carolina, makes the catch, but give Phil Petty credit on that as he had Bradford come clean on the play right in his face, but drills the ball to Willis Ham to pick up the first down. Great job, Phil Petty. You can see here Vanderbilt come with the, the linebacker blitz off the corner, but give Petty credit. He sits in there, takes the blow, but yet delivers the football to Willis Ham of Spring Valley. A well, Spring Valley guy stepping up doing a little something, something, as you say, Todd. <laughs> Willis's father, very distinguished gentleman in South Carolina, and Gamecock recruited Willis hard. Derek Watson now doing one of his numbers. Everybody just holding back, trying to stop him as they fear that 65-yard click off that he had against Arkansas a week ago when he started to reverse his field. And Derek's going to get a breather as it looks like Corey Alexander comes into play, but you can't ever tell Derek not to give it a shot because too many times does he make that play work. Phil Petty now running, splits the defenders, picks up a first down. Nice job on that play. He's hit a little bit late and he comes up gimpy. Petty, Petty. Picks up 12 yards on the play, does Phil. From Bowling Springs. 27, 25. Junior signal caller. Add the ankle injury. You see right here out the shotgun gun formation. Fakes the shovel pass right here. Petty just keeps the ball. Great running ability. Great running ability. They say Petty runs about a 4 6 40, and, and he has shown that some past ball games how he can run with the football. 11 plays already on this drive. Andrew Pinnock, tall sweep. We don't see that often but him, but he makes it work. As Andrew goes north south after splitting to the outside and picks up seven yards before Nate Murrow brings him down. They got a flag on the play, though. We well, see a flag in this vicinity, Ty. We all know that's usually a holding call against the offense. Better known as cheating. You know how you offensive guys like to cheat sometimes. <laughs> Trying to get a, another advantage. Well, for goodness sakes, we know you defensive guys are going to whine about it, whatever occurs. <laughs> <laughs> i never seen an offensive lining, lineman holding in pass protection when I was the quarterback. Sure, Ty. You're not even looking. <laughs> so that brings up a first and 13 now. Pressure again by Vanderbilt. Up the middle. Now they back off. Now they come. And now they get it. Phil Petty is sacked for a nine-yard loss on the play. Jonathan Schaub and Bradford. They get him top, but they got a little bit anxious right there. And that's a ticket when you're blitzing. Coach is going to always, always tell you, do not show it. You know, you try to study tape and study film, try to get the cadence of what, what the offense is going on, and then try to hit those blitzes right when he says set. Right there, Vanderbilt's got a little bit anxious. Now Andrew Pinnock on the slide play. Gets into the secondary, and the big man is finally brought down by Giveny of Vanderbilt, but not before he picks up 13 yards on the play. So the Connecticut freight train getting a lot of reps in this ball game so far. Derek Watson injured, check that, a little bit ill before this ball game, had a fever and some flu symptoms, so Andrew getting some reps. You see the score there. We're in the second quarter of Carolina versus Vanderbilt. Bill Petty looking, plenty of time. Throws the fade down the sideline, but it's Overthrown as Jones is on the coverage there for.
Vanderbilt passes to Willis Ham. Well, you hear the booze in the background here from the fans because they, they felt like they had a false start by the right tackle of the game because he jumped a little bit before the ball was snapped. But it didn't matter anyway. Phil Petty overthrew the football and they got a chance to live again. Fine secondary that you get a look at there for Vanderbilt. Williams, Jones, Tiffany. Rely on them and their linebackers a lot more than they do that front four or three. But Phil Petty's going to have to get together on second and ten, see what they can pick up. And they go back to Andrew Pennick, who continues to drive, not surprisingly, and he's absolutely bootlegged before they bring him down. Five yards on the play, and that's what they needed. Well, Thunder and Lightning, or Lightning and Thunder, whichever way you want to put it, but, but look at Thunder. Thunder thighs. Thunder booty, he's got it all tight. He's got the back. He's thick. Look at him. He just lunges for five yards. That's what I like about him. He runs very hard. He had four TDs before he scored in the first quarter of this ball game this season so far. Phil Petty again. The slant route and again to Willis Ham. So almost the exact same play, Corey, on the opposite side and just as effective. And give credit to Phil Petty again for getting that playoff. Well, Petty's showing some great patience in the pocket because Vanderbilt is using a lot of blitz, a lot of run blitzes, a lot of pass blitzes. But again, utilize your big receivers. You know, Kelly, Atkinson, and now Willis Hammond's in the ball game. Just run those slant patterns over the little cornerbacks, the big wide-body guys that can shield the defenders off. Great job of throwing the football by Petty. Great catch by Willis Ham. And that was on a third and five that brings up first and goal. Andrew Finnick will get the carry. He picks up a couple of yards, make it two before he's brought down. Key to stopping a guy like Andrew Pinnock is you got to hit him, Todd, before he gets going. Before that bus gets rolling, you know how the big bus takes a long time to get started, but once that thing gets to humming, it's hard to slow down. That's the same thing with Andrew Pinnock. If you're going to stop him, you got to hit him before he gets those legs turning and gets into that secondary because he's going to punish the people. But now, first and goal for Carolina. They get the spread even with Pinnock in the ball game. Check that. That's Corey Alexander. False start on the play now. Penalty against South Carolina. Not good on a first and goal to nine. Al Ford making the call. Looked like the left guard jumped a little bit, got a little antsy right there, and jumped outside before the ball was snapped. Well, that'll bring it second goal, but on the 12-yard line. Reverse play, Ryan Brewer, Phil Petty on the block. But Winborn is over there, and Moreau, the other linebacker for Vanderbilt, slides off the Phil Petty block and stops it. But a good call there on second goal from the 12. Still picks up seven yards. This is the 20th play of the drive. Wow. You know that defense is huffing and puffing. Phil Petty, blitz, pass, incomplete, and flags flying everywhere. Tried to go to Carlos Spikes on the play. Well, Vanderbilt comes here tied on a safety blitz, and looked like the safety got grabbed right there by the Gamecock. I didn't catch the number who it was on. Been in college football, they don't tell you by microphone, but they will tell Coach Holtz because you believe it, he's going to be asking. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Who's that on? Who's that on? Do you like that, Corey, that they don't call out the guy in yeah. college football? Yeah, you know, in the pros, they expose you. Yeah. You know, especially like Monday Night Football, and they're going to say, holding number 57. <laughs> sure. You know, Corey like, Miller. It's me. Here I am. I got caught cheating. So after 19 plays, check that. And Weaver's going to have to come in. It's a high snap, but he waits on it. So a good job by Kevin Sides to get the ball down. Adam Holmes there with a little bit of high snap. Not like him. But Dan Weaver waits on it and punches the thing through. So they make good on the drive. 19 plays, 88 yards. It took 8 minutes and 33 seconds off the clock in the second quarter of this ball game. Carolina leads 10-7. to There's some of the Gamecock faithful who traveled from around the state of South Carolina. I'm telling you what, they 
took over downtown Nashville the night before that ball game, and I happened to be there doing my research as usual. Sure, Ty. <laughs> what were you researching, may I ask? <laughs> I need to know the culture of these cities in order to call these games. So, Jason Corson kicks off for the third time in this ball game, and Ray Perkins is able to return this one, though, 26 yards. I'll there, tell you, I'm sorry, looking to drive. Excuse me. Speaking of Nashville, it really is a nice city. I had a chance to spend some time down there going to the Champions for Christ. And I tell you, it's a great fun, great to, to good restaurants, and great time. Well, hello. Dan Stricker on the skinny post, as good a pass as I've seen all year from anybody. Greg Zolman snapping that one off down the field to his big man, 40 yards on the play before Sheldon Brown slides up underneath him to make the tackle. Very nicely done. So first and 10 all of a sudden, and Jared McGrath gets the pitch and he's got some room. Shannon Wadley can't make the play. And let me check the number, DeAndre Island, who's already had a couple tackles in this ball game so far, makes the stop. Did you see Island right there? That's what I was talking about. I'm, the guy will come up, man. I mean, he comes up hard, but, you know, a lot doesn't happen. I mean, he <laughs> took the, the bulk of that ball right there. That's what happens when you're a freshman. But I like the attitude, nevertheless. So we get our first look at Ray Perkins at the tailback position. At least receiving it on the slide play. He did take a pitch early on in the ball game. Be a league of motion here. Yep. In Vanderbilt. Penalty against the Commodores, five yards. Of course, back to the South Carolina 31-yard line. No play. So Zolman and Dan Stricker, who already have hooked up for a touchdown in this ball game, kick this series off with a 40-yard completion to get it quickly down into Carolina territory. This will be a second eight as we see Cleveland Pinckney playing on that bad ankle. Will not be denied. He says this is his bowl year. This is his senior year. He's going to get every down he can. Carson in motion, Zolman, low snap, goes to the outside, hits Carson. And then he is hit by DeAndre Island again. <laughs> that appeared to be a little more effective. Well, I like that blow there by Island. I tell you, I, I like the guy. He comes up hard. He doesn't slow down. He's not a big guy. He's somewhat of a threat guy. But he will throw his body in there. You got to like the attitude and the demeanor of that young safety. They did rule it an incompletion. So that's a third and eight now. For Zolman, surprisingly, under center. Plenty of time in the pocket. Now he's pressured, now he's sacked. So, let's check the numbers there. Zolman and Kalimba Edwards on the sack, probably getting a half a sack apiece there. And they'll take it. You can see here, Kalimba Edwards missed a sack early in the ball game, but look at he pushes the tackle, just brute strength right here, works inside and gets half of the sack, and I can't tell who the other guy right there. I think Willie Alford on the play. Like Willie Alford, you can see here, Clemmer Edwards forced to tackle upfield, and him and Alford come in there and make the sack. Great play by the Carolina defense. Brings up a fourth and 11, and Markham will come on to kick, and that kick looks wide right. That was an attempt of a 51-yarder. Looks short and right, so the Gamecocks, after giving up 41 yards, Look, there's a Gamecock attention, including Dr. John Moore, a lot of the traveling crew. There's Bob Pulliam, Pulliam Jeff, Ford. Jeff Barber, who's the Gamecock club director, and his wife. No better fan. You know he's got the, the job in the athletic department. He loves to win. Derek Watson now back on the field for Carolina. He crosses the 40-yard line, so we saw Thunder substantially on that 19-play drive, and Lightning comes back in now. I don't think Derek, even with the flu and the fever and the headache, is going to want to go without a 100-yard game. <laughs> well, he likes those 100-yarders. He, he, he has some records out, I feel like, in sight. You know, last week we saw George Rogers, who now looks like an offensive tackle, uh, go out there with the 80 team, and, and he sees those records, and I think the guy wants to break them. Well, he's had four 100-yard games on the season so far. Derrick gets to the outside on a good block, steel block, and he moves his way back inside with Giboney. He picks up 
nine yards on the play for a first down. Good seal block by that time on the left tackle. The offensive line, for the most part, all year has done an outstanding job. They understand their role. You know, I think last year, as a couple of games I saw, you know, that the offense that they were using last year really didn't fit the mold of that particular offensive line. But now they've matured a little bit and the spread offense and the variety of the things that Skip Holt has and Holt's have, have those guys doing, Todd, has really helped them be effective. First and ten. You see the clock winding down. It's still Petty. Lost one to Willis Ham, who gets behind the defense. And Willis Ham with another substantial catch, 32 yards on the play. We mentioned Willis, 6'3", 205 pounds, redshirt sophomore from Spring Valley. Guarded as one of the top receivers in the state out of high school. You see here, Carolina again going with the rollout play here by Petty, pumps fakes here, looking. And Willis Hamish does an outstanding job of getting open because he, his first read wasn't there and he just kept working and working and found the spot where he got behind the defender and Petty lost the ball there to him for a first down to Willis Hamm. And Willis did a good job of changing direction once his quarterback scrambled. Derek Watson back in on the sprint draw play. Picking up just a couple there. Willis had 1,800 yards and 13 touchdowns in his career. Holds eight records at Spring Valley. Ran the 400 meter relay. The second the state championship. How about these guys? Willis Ham was born in 1980, August 3rd. Wow. We're getting to be old, boy. I think you're getting to be old, and today being my birthday, Todd, I'm 22. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got t-shirts older than that. Phil Petty <laughs> rolls left. Now Scrambling's got to throw it away. Smart move by Petty on the play. So the Gamecocks with about 206 left in the half is trying to make something happen and get some points. But they're under pressure at the moment. You see they're inside the 15-yard line of Vanderbilt. Bill's done a good job of managing the clock this season so far in this position. Just under two. Vanderbilt backing out. Bill Petty sometimes holding clearly by the left tackle. Bill's going to have to get out of bounds, and he does so. When you're moving the ball and you're getting in the red zone, you don't need dumb holding penalties and false starts and those types of things. You just got to be a little more disciplined down here in the red area because they just really kill your drive. Now Ford confirming what we already thought. There's Lou Holt. Had a penalty down here before, which caused them to go for a field goal, and they do so. Dan Weaver will come on. It's a fake. Kevin Sides rolls out to his left and hits Rod Trafford for a completion, and we'll see if it's a first down, as they needed 10 yards on the play, so Lou Holtz going to his bag of trickery. It is a first down. Woody cannot latch that as he declined the penalty, which allowed the Gamecocks to be in that position, and the former quarterback, Kevin Sides, faking it, Corey. You can see here, Lou Holtz pulling out all the tricks today. But look at the Vanderbilt defense. They're standing around, they're not rushing the kick, not looking at the receiver here. And just a really easy play by the Gamecocks. Nobody's paying attention right here because they think the Gamecocks are going to take the easy three. Well, on defense, you got to be aware at all times. And right there, you see Vanderbilt was not ready for that particular play. Finnick now will go to work on first and goal from the five touchdown Carolina. So it pays off. Lou Holt goes for the fake field goal. Doesn't get the touchdown on the play as the ball is slightly high, but the very next play, Andrew Pennick scores five yards over the right tackle for his second touchdown on the day. And Carolina, right before the half, is going to try to make it 17-7 in its SEC road ball game. And Dan Weaver gets it. No fake this time. 
Kevin Sides puts the ball down, beautifully executed. I'll tell you the buff, again, the great switch up. You hit him with Watson, and then you bring in the buff, Thunder, whatever you want to call him. He does a great job of hitting the hole. He doesn't hesitate in the hole. He sees it, he lowers his shoulder, and he's moving forward. And I tell you, he's a great weapon to have, and, and that's why another reason Gamecocks have been successful. I'll tell you how they have numerous weapons on this team with the four or five with, with the receivers they have. You got Watson, you got Brewer, and you throw in there with Pennock. A lot of good talent on that offensive fo football team. Jason Corsi, as he often does after a touchdown, forces Jimmy Williams, one of the top of the return guys in the Southeastern Conference, to keep that ball in the end zone. So Carolina capitalizing, going up 17-7 right before the half. And Vanderbilt, with just a couple moments to go in this first half. Let's see if they attempt to go for something as we get a good look at Andre Offing and they're going to rush the football with Rodney Williams on the play. Williams the third leading rusher on the football team but he'll pick up three yards but Woody appears to be content with running out the clock. Dennis Quinn on the stop. When you backed up you don't want to take a chance of throwing an interception down here and and letting the game cops get another score, then you're really going to have time behind and, and the game cops having the momentum already. This would not be a great situation for the Vanderbilt Commodores to be in. They're getting a shotgun this this time, but they'll go back to running the football as Shannon Wadley shoots through there, but Rodney Williams avoids a tremendous collision. And that will run out the clock. Carolina leading 17 to 7. So Coach Woody Wood now for Corey going off the field with a couple boos from the Vanderbilt Commodore yeah. fans who weren't happy that he ran out the clock there. But the Gamecocks using some trickery in the kicking game to overcome maybe a little bit of lack of intensity in that first half after they come off a road check that they've come off a victory at home against Arkansas yeah, very yeah. emotional and they have not had an open date in eight ball games so they overcome the lack of intensity maybe there in the first quarter mm -hmm. by using a good running mate and Andrew Pennick yes and some trickery in the uh, kicking game is that kind of the first half that you expected by the Gamecocks yes I, I expected them to come out being a little flat like I said when you plan a team like the Vanderbilt Commodores who a team that the Gamecocks should win against you know, and they go in there with a little cockiness and, and a little arrogance about them now being 6-1, and one and, and they showed it. The defense started out flat. Vanderbilt takes the ball five plays, goes down and scores a touchdown. You know, they moved the ball, had some good successful plays, but the Carolina offense has countered that with some good plays by Petty, some good throws, some good runs by Watson, and then you throw in the buff, Andrew Pennock, who's done a great job. As you can see here, it shows in the rushing yards by the Carolina Gamecocks, 129 yards to Vanderbilt's 40. And even the passing game was 112 yards already. 241 yards in the first half alone, Todd. This Gamecock team is, is well balanced. You know, you got the guy who's kicking the ball in Weaver now, so they get mm -hmm. some consistency there. And the trick play with the field goal, and they go and score a touchdown. So the Gamecocks are doing whatever it takes. And I think that's what you got to do in this type of ball game to win. Yeah, you got to give your team an edge, yes. even if they're lacking intensity there. We also saw the time of possession yes. 18 minutes by Carolina yes. in that first half. But Greg Zolman. Was seven to ten in that. Yes. Showed some flashes of brilliance at that time in the first half. Corey, how about the um, the open date? There's a lot of talk about that. It is eight games into the season. Of course, players get tired. I remember yes. that. Your legs get out from under you. But is it as big as coaches talk about, or is it just kind of coach talk? Another way to kind of shield away the opponents on how your football team is really playing. Open dates can be tough, and a lot of team doesn't respond well from open dates. And being that in a college season. You know, you go seven, eight games tied without having a break. I mean, guys are tired. And I think the Gamecocks really need it. So I think it's going to be beneficial to them for the standpoint of guys are injured like Neesmith and, and Pinkney, guys like that. Horny's going to be able to come back. So when I feel like the Gamecocks are going these last three weeks with Florida, Clemson, and uh, give me the other team, Todd. I'm not sure it is. Tennessee, Tennessee pretty good excuse team. Me, another good team. I'm sorry. But three of their top teams, I think, on their schedule, mm -hmm. they need this, this, this bye week to rest, recover, and come back and make a good run. Well, it does make a difference, particularly when you mention the injuries that they've got. Well, we've seen our first half action. Now let's go back to Vanderbilt Stadium for Carolina versus Vanderbilt. Carolina leading 17-7. to 7. 
in the first half. Show your support for Carolina football on South Carolina ETV by making a call and making a pledge to the ETV endowment. 1-800-256-8535 or 256-0222. Welcome back to Carolina football on South Carolina ETV. Todd Ellis along with Corey Miller. We're bringing you Carolina versus Vanderbilt. It's our second half action. Gamecocks are leading 17-7 to at this point. Get a good look at Derek Watson. He's been spelled substantially by Andrew Pinnock in the first half, but still getting his own. Derek brings it out across the 20 before he's taken down. Derek's second in the conference in kickoff returns. He looks like he's grabbing that hamstring a little bit there. Hope that not the case. Brings it back 20 yards. There's Phil Petty. First half numbers. Kept his team out of trouble, Corey. That's what, one of the things he does best. He has, and the key stat right there is that zero INTs, and that's what you don't want is some interception and turnovers by your quarterback. And first play of our second half for Carolina. That's going to be Derek Watson. He rushes two yards to the South Carolina 25 for Stewart and Doyle Crosby make the stop for Vanderbilt. Bill Petty was 12 of 21 for 170 yards last week with two touchdowns. One to Brian Scott, one to Jermail Kelly. He's been spreading the wealth around. Always keeps those receivers happy. That's good. You got to keep them boys happy. Keep feeding them the pig, as they say. Feed me the pig. Feed me the pig. Trips to the left this time, spread again. Derek on the left side picks up the blitz. And Phil Petty makes some pay for it. He goes to Ryan Brewer across the middle. Ryan ran a reverse. First time we've seen him the ball through the air this afternoon so far. 5'10, 210 pound sophomore from Troy, Ohio. You can see here Mr. Ohio football. Ryan Brewer. Is a recipient here of a slant pass from Phil Petty for a gain of nine yards. And you got to like Ryan Brewer. He's a guy I, I like to recognize him as Mr. Everything. Turns punts. He plays receiver. He runs the ball, catches the ball, catches it again. Again. There's Ryan Brewer again on the play. The same one. Kind of uncovered, so he just slides into that void area there. Makes the completions. Another nine-yard game. I didn't know no better. I think this is the exact same play, and we're covering it again because it's just another slant play. You can see here, Bill Petty, just a quick little drop. Slant play here, and you can see the poor tackling by the All-American right there. Head down, and Ryan Brewer gets another nice game. And Derek Watson will go back to work now, but this time he is... Stop before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Matt Stewart, the leading sacker on the team. And these two teams have been doing some jawing, and now they're doing some pushing. Derek doesn't take well. You've been under those piles before, and I won't blame it all on defensive players by no means, but there's a lot of ankle twisting, eye poking. Yes, we, we did a story uh, about two years ago for ESPN talked about under the pile, you know, what goes on, and, and they went around the league asking different guys what goes on under the pile, and you would be surprised to know, fans, what went on under those piles. I mean, yeah. from, like I said, eye poking to grabbing the places where you don't want to be grabbed. I mean, there's some just really nasty things, and, and guys really get upset about that. For goodness sake, don't have an injury. They'll go after that. So Phil Petty on third and run. Goes the quarterback sneak, picks up the first down. Get a penalty on the play. That's Stewart. They were just right on the right. jawing with Derek Watson. He does get a personal foul. Well, this is just a carryover from, as Todd mentioned, that what was going on that last play. And, and Stewart there obviously taking out his frustration, even the cops coming over to get on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you just can't do it. You got to keep the composure. And you got to play football. Oh, he's going to ride him a ticket there for a second. <laughs> First and ten now, the 40-yard line for Phil Petty. 
is back to Derek Watson. Good block that time by C.J. Fry, who's in the ball game, pulled over there, and you could likely hear the collision on your television set. He had the ankle injury. Several of them in the offensive line. So now we got Laurel Johnson playing the left tackle position. We've got Brown in at center. Shane Hall playing right tackle. Man, that is something. The versatility of these young men to go in there and play those positions. When everybody's injured, give them credit. Pressure again by Vanderbilt. It won't be enough, though. Derek Watson across the 20. Pass the 10, touchdown, Derek Watson. Oh, nicely done. And just as we were applauding the Gamecocks in that offensive line, Derek Watson goes 34 yards on the play for a touchdown. First one for Derek this afternoon. His running mate, Pettick, has two on the day. Derek Watson coming in the game was supposed to be feeling bad. I mean, my God, I mean... <laughs> I tell you, the guy can do it under the worst of circumstances. You know, blue symptoms all week, and you know, that's why he's seeing Pinnock a lot more. But Vanderbilt just gets caught right there. And we're going to see here coming up on the replay, they're coming out blitzing off the corners. And you can see here, they got they brought the whole farm side, and there's not even a safety back there. Watson gets in the hole. Great job blocking by the offensive line to, to seal off those guys. You can see here, look at the blocking. And boom, right up the middle, Watson goes for the touchdown. And I tell you, you could have drove a big bus through that hole. So big. Now look at this, the linebacker's blitzing. Carolina gets away with a little bit of hole right there. But uh, more of a pinch of a jerk. Look, I don't know if you call that a hole. Pinch, but remember, I'm a defensive guy, so I see it as a hole. I see it as a hole. <laughs> if that held up Jamie Winborn, then that guy needs to retire before he even gets to the NFL. I would agree. I would concur. So, the Southeastern Conference number one player in all-purpose yards, over 170 per game, picks up a 34-yard touchdown. He's got 10 on the year. Here does Derek Watson. Clearly one of the top players in the conference. Jason Corsi now to kick off. That drive was seven plays, 77 yards, and Jimmy Williams now is going to get a chance to return it. He makes the move on Sheldon Brown, flag down before getting out of bounds. So Williams returns it 23 yards, but let's check out the penalty here. It will be against Vanderbilt holding 10 yards on the return. Al Ford, his crew, they can they can enemies with Woody Wooden offer in earlier ball games this year. Thought he got some bad calls against him in the Georgia ball game, but he got this crew again. Zolman now trying to get his team to rebound. Jared McGrath's going to reverse this field. Now he's going to pitch it to Zolman. Zolman says. Uh, I guess I'll take it, and he goes up the field before getting hit by Willie Alford on the play and Andre Goodman. So there's Langston Moore holding that hand. Vanderbilt's trying any and everything they can <laughs> try to get something working for him on offense. There in the draft is one of the completions. Goldman going back to work now. Goes across the middle to Stricker. Stricker, Stricker proving to me that he doesn't mind going across the middle as he picks up four yards on that play. Well, you look at Stricker right there, he's a tight end, but he's about the si same size as our wide receivers. And, you know, he's one of those guys, like I said, he's not known for his blocking. As you can see, it's a physique right there. Not a very big guy, but he has great hands and runs great routes. Goldman again. Going across the middle this time to Elliot Carson, who's second on the team in receptions behind Stricker with 21. He is a solid tight end for the Commodores. Finished second in the conference last year in that all SEC voting for that position. He goes in H back motion, picks his play. Back to McGrath. McGrath with a cut again. Another cut back up the middle. Now he's got some real room and he falls down. DeAndre Island had some angle on him there, but McGrath falls down, but Vanderbilt does not get intimidated by what would appear to be the back-breaking play by Derek Watson. They come right back. Now Perkins going to spell McGrath, and he gets up the sideline. Good blocking that time on Sheldon Brown. Well, these are the most yards I've seen this defense 
give up, especially in the running game. And I mean, this is not typical of the Carolina defense right here. They're usually pretty solid against the run, and uh, these guys now are finding some lanes and exploiting them down the outside, the corners of the Carolina defense, and, and getting some positive yardage. Mark it for the first down to see where they get it. And they do so. So Ray Perkins picked up 11 on that play, and all of a sudden they're down to the South Carolina 13-yard line. I guess when you're 0-5 in the conference, you've had 18 straight losing seasons, you learn to be resilient. And they're trying to come back once again. Remember, this team racked up some serious yardage and led Georgia last week. Roman now goes to Perkins, who's popped. Rashad Faison, the 5'9", 185-pound sophomore from Wachula, Florida, on the stop. Rashad Faison, pound for pound, is probably one of the toughest defenders in the country at that safety position. You can see right here, comes up, lays a good lick on him, but one thing he does wrong right there is he doesn't wrap up. And you can see here he comes in here. You got to be careful there, Rashad Faison. Just ducking your head because yeah, I can tell you that's where a lot of guys get hurt, get injured, tied. And, and the other thing he does, he doesn't wrap up, but he does lay a good pop right there. Perkins, all of a sudden, struggling for the touchdown. So Vanderbilt comes right back on seven plays, goes 86 yards, and responds to the Carolina touchdown. Ray Perkins going nine yards up the middle on Carolina as Markham comes on to kick, and it's good. The score now, 24-14, and back to being a ball game again. Vanderbilt's not going to quit. I mean, they come right back after Carolina touchdown, march right down the field. I'm, I'm a little surprised at the Gamecock defense really, again, you know, the first quarter, how they started flat, and you come out in the second quarter, kind of the same thing, that it's not there emotionally. They're not playing with that excitement that we usually, we usually see them playing with. And Vanderbilt is starting to exploit that. They're running the football, which we don't see a lot of teams have to say running the football against the Gamecocks. It is so hard to be intense every week defensively as Corey Alexander brings the ball out of the end zone deep. He's going to regret that as he doesn't get back to the 15-yard line on the play. So Carolina will be having to start this deep in their territory at the 14-yard line. But as I was saying, it's so hard to keep the intensity up for 11 weeks in the season. I know everybody's out there going, come on, these young men are playing college football. They're playing some of the best teams in the country. How can you not do that? Well, it's just like anything else. Some people out there have the most exciting jobs in the world. Everybody would like to do them, yeah. but when you do it every day and you go through the physical rigors that these young men do, it's tough to keep that edge. It really is, and we mentioned they haven't had an open date yet. And you know, they've been going at it for a while, ever since August, the training camp, and your body wears down, but, you know, not making excuses. Derek Watson doesn't look worn out on this play as there's a holding, but Derek Watson's going to go the distance if that holds up, or if it's against Vanderbilt, but it appeared to be holding by the Gamecock receiver at that That's my man. He makes the call. <laughs> Bring it back, he said, bring it back. So Derek Watson, for the third week in the row, breaks one off out of the eye position for a touchdown, but it will not count. You know, the Gamecocks holding right there, and they've had this call against him several times tonight. You can see here as Mr. Referee gives the call. And I mean, what a great run by Derek Watson, and, and to have a holding call, man. You know, he's gonna be like, man, what's going on? There's Jamel. Obviously, the call was on him. He's going to get a holding call by receivers down the field. And Jamel has some explaining to do to Mr. Holt. And I can see him saying, you know, uh, well, Coach, what had happened was <laughs> I got a little bit too much jersey. We really won't mind that too much. It's Corey Alexander. He can't find the hole. He cuts back in a little too early. A little too impatient with the blocking development there. But Jamel, along with Ham, Brian Scott, Ryan Brewer, has been praised substantially by Lou Holtz and his staff. Todd Fitch included, the wide receivers coach, about their blocking ability. And we wouldn't have seen Derek Watson have three yards of over, three runs of over 58 yards for touchdowns 
that those guys not been doing their job, but Jamel got caught on that play. Bill Petty now back back to work. Andrew Penning. So the Vanderbilt defense, after they get the score from their offense, stiffening somewhat here. There appears to be some shuffling going on as the Gamecocks faithful booing it. Jamie Winborn and Travis Lewis fight. Get a look at the Gamecock folks. Well, the fans are not going to back down either. Boy, they're a little rowdy today. <laughs> either way, we're still looking at a third and four. You hear the pen in the background of USC. Five to seven thousand Gamecock fans have been very vocal in Commodore Stadium. Vanderbilt showing some pressure from the outside. They bring it. Travis Lewis picks it up. Phil Petty under some pressure, under real pressure now. Dumps the ball off and it's caught. Brian Scott coming back to make a nice play on a third and four. As Phil Petty, with patience and good speed, is able to hold on to the football. Well, Petty, you right. You said the right word, Ty, and that's patience. And he shows great patience right here. As Vanderbilt comes on the blitz on the outside, Petty steps up in the pocket. But look at his eyes. It's, it continues to be downfield. And Scott, give him some credit. He keeps working. He keeps working. He doesn't stop on his route and gets open right there for Petty. Gets the first down for the Gamecocks. Bill Petty, who passed for a career-high 240 yards against Eastern Michigan early in the season. Now going down the sideline to Willis Hamm. Incomplete. Willis may have pushed it inside a little bit too much. There's McWhorter was on the coverage, but the ball thrown outside his shoulder. Incomplete, though, on a first and ten. Cam just broke off his route a little bit too early. If he'd have kept running and stayed on his outside right there, he would have had a chance to possibly com complete that ball right there. So second and ten for the Bowling Springs Redshirt Junior. There's your call. You get to look at the defense. Knows what he wants now. And that's Andrew Pennick up the middle. Pennick on a seven-yard run brought down by Winborn and Steve Rock. Look at him. They're not getting up so fast now. Andrew Pennick shaking his head. Yeah. Saying, give me a little more of that. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Pennick, as I say, he's, he's a big guy. I saw him in the locker room after the uh, Arkansas game. I had to talk to him. And, you know, he's very confident, very positive about, about his role and on this team playing behind Watson. And, you know, he's going to have his opportunity to step in and have some big numbers one day. The clock is not correct. Andrew Pennick takes the pitch there on a third and three. He's stopped by Matt Stewart. Appears to be short of the first down. I think he's going to pick up about two yards on the play. See there, Matt Stewart on the tackle, the same guy who got the personal foul call early and, and received the citation by the cop on the sideline. is back in the game doing his job. Yeah, that's the right way to do it. Just make a clean hit. What he wouldn't offer? One of the more... Kind of characteristic guys <laughs> in the say. Southeastern Conference. He's great at media days, great with the media. Always good for a quote. Gamecocks forced the punt. Vanderbilt, though, taking it up the middle. A nice return that time by Ronald Hatcher. Brings it up nine yards, but Marco Hutchinson saying, I've got a fumble recovery, but he won't win the argument there. But the Commodores will take back over. Coach Woody had a big fat bracelet on his wrist, Todd. Huh? Look at that big thing right there. 18 karat gold. Say, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're talking about his watch or his waistline? Well, I don't know about his waistline. There's but, a lot of good steakhouses in Nashville, and I'm sure Woody does not mind partaking. Just under three minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter of this ball game as Chris Young will take it on first and ten and go for six yards. Marco Hutchinson we just saw into the ball game now. Talking about Coach Woody, Todd, you know, to mention he did coach one of the greatest defense of all time in the NFL, and that 
steel curtain defense with Joe Green and Jack Lambert, Jack Ham, all those great players. So he coming into this football game with some great credentials, no doubt. No question about it. Well respected. Well respected within the Southeastern Conference and around the country and his schemes defensively. Vanderbilt now in the second four. They'll go to Perkins. Penetration by Caldwell, but not enough. He takes Faison and DeAndre Island again. DeAndre having a heck of a ball game so far in the free safety position. You know he's got the speed of playing coverage as he's a 300 and 110 meter hurdle champ, hurdles champion out of Tupelo, Mississippi. So his mama talked him into staying with football and it earned him a scholarship. Mama always knows best. The woman who's feeding you, you better listen to her. That's right. First and ten for Perkins. Goes up the middle for two yards on the play. Vanderbilt, though, has not always been sorry. We mentioned the 18-year losing streak. Back in 1984, this team went 8-4 when assistant football coach Dave Roberts served on the Vanderbilt coaching staff. Did that so from 78 to 83. In 82, the team actually went to the Hall of Fame Bowl behind a couple good quarterbacks. They were throwing the football over the field at that time. There's a good shot of Marco. Deep motion that time. Fake reverse. Zolman throws to the flats to Perkins. Marco can't get there. Willie Alford can't get there before Perkins runs out of bounds. So another good-looking drive by the Commodores, who are not about to lie down in this ball game. Well, Vanderbilt is showing you so much on offense that it's hard to prepare for a team like this because they do so much. They give you multiple formations. You see a little bit of old Washington Redskins counter trades. You see the, the, the spread offense, you see a lot of reverses, and now draw plays out the, out the uh, high backfield. Well, I tell you, the offensive coordinator really has a sharp pencil. He does. Kalimba Edwards pretty sharp on that play. He's upset, but he did a good job of stringing it out and then just running down the faster young, showing that speed. That's the kind of play we saw Abraham make last year. He, take on that blocker and then sprint to the pitch band, knock him down. Right, and I, I mentioned earlier about when Kalimba missed that sack, about really having those strong hands, and that's something he should work on. You know, you see guys who get those sacks tied just by two fingers sometimes pulling quarterbacks down, and that's just all based on having good, strong grip in your hands. That was Lou Thomas on that last carry. He comes in motion, fake to him this time. Zolman now throwing across the middle and beautifully executed, but dropped. Carson cannot hold on. The sure-handed tight end drops the ball inside the 15-yard line of Carolina. Columbia Evers again coming off the corner, putting a little pressure on the quarterback here, and, and he still makes a great throw and just dropped by the tight end. We can see here on the replay. Good looking play. Look at here, Columbia plays the fake, comes up to feel like it's supposed to. Just a look at this throw. What a great throw. But what a great hit there at the last minute to draw that football out. See the conversions. Here's Zolman. Pressure by Edwards. Zolman zipping it. But incomplete that time to Lou Thomas again. That was on a third and ten, and we'll see what the Commodores do. Now trailing 24 to 14 in this ball game. They had what appeared to be a nice looking drive going on, but a couple incompletions later. Gamecocks defense, secondary in particular, drawing a few passes away. Well, you can see why Vanderbilt and Zolman had 440-odd yards against the number one ranked defense, Georgia Bulldogs, last week. I mean, because they, they have some threats on offense, Ty. They can move the ball up and down the field. Zolman has a great arm, pretty accurate throwing the football. They can run it. And, uh, you know, they're having success today against the Gamecocks, who's not a shabby defense in themselves. So Woody elects to punt it, but the ball will go into the end zone, the touchback, Carolina will take over. It's a 37-yard punt. Get a look at that offense. It gathers up on the sideline. You see Todd Fitch there in the background getting the groups together. And everybody knows who's to go out. They actually call the play there and then go directly to the line of scrimmage. It's a good idea that everybody can get the last minute instructions if need be from those coaches before you run the first play. 
great game about this football as much as any sport, Corey, is always evolving. Yeah. Those kind of things that we're seeing in the last couple of years that maybe make a difference. Yes. That is Andrew Pennick there, and it's not 10.49 to go in the third quarter. Just a couple seconds left. The clock is wrong there. The officials calling it on the field, and you see the end of the third quarter. Carolina leading this road game 24 to 14. We're three quarters of the way through it. You see the yardage starting to rack up over 200 yards rushing now. Four penalties on the day for Carolina and the big lead in time of possession. We hope you're enjoying the coverage of Carolina football on South Carolina ETV. If you are, make a call and show your support. 800-256-8535. Make a pledge to the South Carolina ETV Endowment for continuation of South Carolina football coverage on ETV. Good look at the two coaches in the Southeastern Conference. <laughs> well, Lou's at about 2.7 miles now going to the fourth quarter, and Coach Woody is about 0 0.1 and <laughs> waiting on a big stake after the game. I don't know if anybody will serve him as he loses this one. They're 0-6 in the conference. A little live formation now. Travis Lewis there. Andrew Pinnock there as well. Pinnock rolling now. So Watson and Pinnock. Great combination as they go into this fourth quarter and they've spelled each other well and that Gamecock offensive line has done a good job for them as we check those stats. Over 200 yards rushing to this point. Teddy flips Pinnock to the weak side, and they go with him. Nice move to avoid the first tackler, and Andrew Pinnock, look at those big legs get going, and Andrew's showing some speed. Andrew looking a little bit like lightning right there, and showing some quick feet, making a tackle a miss right there, and some explosion, some burst. 22 yards on the pickup for Andrew. Watch this, folks. Vanderbilt again, coming with the blitz. Right the middle, look at it. Whoop! Makes a tackle a miss, and look at the big bowling ball right there. The bust hits the hole. Great game for the Gamecock Pinnock. I tell you, stepping in, Todd, doing a great job. People forget that Andrew was held out because the clearinghouse didn't approve him until the second game of last year. When he's a freshman, he still cranked out 261 yards to be the second leading rusher with a 3.6 yard carry. Good touchdown. Good touchdown. Good so now, tight end left for Carolina, but slot to the right. High formation again. Toss sweep to Pinnock. Melvin Page with a good block. Run, pursued up the middle by the backside backer, as he's supposed to do. Comes over there with Winborn and makes the stop. One yard gain. Well, that time, Vanderbilt plays the play very nicely, and, and you mentioned the backside backer. He's the guy who's got to make that play. Front side's got to play the front side, meaning make that ball cut back right into Ooze, the backside linebacker right there. Great job by the Vanderbilt defense. Pressure showing by Vanderbilt. Fetty sprinting to his left, throwing it, but Ryan can't hold on to it. Ryan Brewer, look at these numbers. In the year 2000, he's got 47 yards rushing. 120 yards catching. In 1999, he had 175 yards in return yards. Punt return yards this year, 134 yards. And he's punted once for a 40-yard average. Check that, punted three times for a 40-yard average. And now, Phil Petty on a third and nine. He'll try to come up with something here to pick up the bulk of that yard barrier. And he'll bring Ryan Brewer across the formation with two seconds to go. He brings it right down there. Good protection. Now it's collapsing. Phil Petty escapes and is going to throw the football before he gets brought down, but it'll be incomplete as he threw it out of bounds to get away. So initially he had some time there, but Vanderbilt bringing on the pressure from the outside as they loop back. Petty does a great job again of avoiding the sack right there and moves around well in the pocket on that bad ankle. And and does a smart thing, Todd. Doesn't throw the interception. Doesn't put his team in a bad position. Throws the ball out of bounds. That's what you want out of a good, mature starting quarterback. As you can see, Dr. Peel there sporting the big hat and coat and tie, which he's been famous for for over the last 15 years or so. And still looking good. He's always dapper. 
I tell you what, between you and me, Corey, we probably paid for a couple of those hats and jackets. Well, I would go in line and say that I'm a Harold Green probably paid for all of those. <laughs> With all those surgeries and braces, and I tell you, hell, did it all. <laughs> Look at the SEC Bowl selection list, the Sugar Bowl there. Of course, what we don't see is if one of the teams in the Southeastern Conference, including Carolina, was to run the table, they'd be playing in the Orange Bowl for the National Championship. It's some good tie-ins there. A lot of people thinking this Gamecock football team will go to Tampa to play in the Outback Bowl if they can get another win. And they're trying to do so against Vanderbilt. It's 24 to 14, Carolina leading. This is Carolina football on South Carolina ETV. Corey Miller along with myself, Todd Ellis. You're watching the Commodores trying to come back on their junior quarterback's left arm, Greg Zolman. The only lefty, I think, in the league this year. Brings his tight end across the formation. Elliot Carson. And that ball is batted down. So Willie Stams getting that big ball up there and doing what a defensive lineman is supposed to do, Corey. That's right. If you're not going to get right in the quarterback's face, if you're being blocked, as you can see here, Willie Sams, number 99 right here in the screen. You can see here, rushing the quarterback, work, work, boom. Knocks the ball down. I'm sorry, it wasn't 99. That's 98, 98, of course, it's uh, number 98, Willie Sands right there. I need to clean my glasses off, I guess. <laughs> I guess these days. I guess being on birthday today, I am getting a little old and great. Is it really your birthday? Yes. How old are you? Oh, my goodness. Almost picked off on the outside by Kevin House. And Kevin right there on the curl route. And a nice job on the coverage there. Third and eight. He's up, Brick. House. That's Kevin House right there, ladies and gentlemen. Reads the ball very well, comes out of his break, and almost gets a pick tile for a touchdown. And you can see the receiver is getting yelled at by his position coach right there. Probably tell him you got to continue to come back right. to the football. And look like he stopped right there and waited on the ball, which allowed Kevin House to get his hands there and knock it down. The last graphic was incomplete. Incorrect, for that matter. Not the third quarter. We're into our fourth quarter with about 12 minutes to go. Ryan Brewer at midfield will call for the fair catch. He bobbles it a little bit and then holds on to it. All right, Corey, I'm not going to let you get past it. How old are you? Well, I am 32 and still feeling young. I mean, you know, I probably can step up and still play with these young guys. Well, I know you could for about two plays. You saw the <laughs> remaining schedule there. Well, Krispy Kreme will come into effect and Zesto, no doubt. But the remaining schedule for Carolina, they call it the Orange Crush, Tennessee next week, then open date, then Florida in Gainesville before going up to Clemson to take on the Tigers in Death Valley. Phil Petty now getting another chance. Pump fake. Gonna go deep. Down the middle. Got a man. Picked off. Jimmy Williams comes over from his corner position and it takes Jamel Kelly to come over there. So Phil Petty cannot get the completion. It looked like Willis Ham was going down the hash mark on the stretch play. Petty, Petty, excuse me, Todd. Petty kind of floated that ball a little bit up there and, and gave the safety right there a chance to run underneath to get this interception. And yeah, I feel like the game cops probably getting a little greedy right there. You know, at this point in the game, he's trying to run out the clock. So McGrath does not have it there. Zolman goes back to the air on the first play after the turnover, the first turnover of the game for Carolina. Bill Petty throws his sixth interception on the season, giving Greg Zolman and crew a chance to come back. That pass was incomplete to Dan Stricker on the first play. You mentioned Bill Petty, a junior. Just five seniors on the depth chart for Carolina this week. Zolman back to pass across the middle, nicely thrown and. Dan Stricker is hit. Rashad Faison, my goodness, second leading tackler on the football team, showing why he's pretty good at it there, putting it right to the chin of Stricker. One thing we haven't seen a lot today is Rashad Faison doing a lot of blitzing as we've been accustomed to these past few weeks. He's now forced to, to play in coverage a lot, I guess, due to the injury side on the Gamecock secondary. Not a lot of pressure by many people today. Not a lot of secondary players coming. Greg Dolman. 
Now to McGrath on the pitch again. Clem Edwards, though, trailing and tracks him down. Nice job that time by Clem Edwards. We mentioned Rashad Faison. Eight tackles on the wall so far this year. They changed that sack and tackle for a loss stat this year to include both of those. He does have three sacks as well. So now, first and ten, they throw to the outside, is batted up in the air. And that's Cecil Caldwell, who has had a couple of those this year and has almost come up with picks. He's very athletic. Anybody who sees him play, including pro scouts, are so surprised by his athletic ability. Cecil has played very well this year. He hasn't had sack numbers up, but that doesn't mean he hasn't played well because he's he's been in there consistently making plays. You can see right here the guy tried to cut him. Vanderbilt trying to run a wide receiver screen, and this is what the offensive line is taught to do is cut the defensive lineman and to get their hands down. Well, obviously, folks, Vanderbilt offensive lineman does not get the job done. Cecil Cowell gets the batted ball. Great play by the game top. Goldman under pressure by Quinn. Going down the middle. Picked off. DeAndre Island for Carolina. The freshman from Tupelo, Mississippi, gets his second pick. And this one being in his first start of his collegiate career. He got one in subbing for Antoine Neesmith last week. Just overthrown, I think, Corey. He just really floated that ball there a little too high, overthrew his receiver. Zolman, a guy who's been pretty accurate for most part of the night. But this time the ball gets away from him because of the pressure on the outside. Zolman really trying to be a player right here, but DeAndre Island from Mississippi said, I'm player hating today, and I'm taking this ball away from you. Gets the interception right there. You can see Kalima smiling, giving the brother their props over there. For a freshman, I tell you, Ty, step down. That step is. Down, done a great job. Pretty good feeling. You start to bank on him, you're doing well. Speaking of banking on somebody, Dane Cox have been doing that today with Andrew Pinnock, who gets his next carry. Rushes over the left side for six yards on the play. Pinnock rushed for 2,800 yards in his senior season. Not bad. That's some getting it for a big man like that. He, he was definitely getting his groove on in, in Connecticut. With those guys up north, you know, they really don't know how to play football too well. But, you know, if he'd done that in South Carolina, we might uh, give him more props. But, no, that's pretty good yard at 2,800. He stays in the ball game. It's still petty. Puts him in the spread. But he'll get the football. And I think that Laurel Johnson checked that. Melvin Page pulling. He gets a piece of windborne. Melvin Page. What a man. Plays five different instruments, then gets sick last week, gets a viral infection, goes into the hospital before the Arkansas game, has fluids all night, comes out and plays. That's pretty tough. I mean, not the fact that he went to the hospital and came back and played last week, but the fact that he can play five instruments. <laughs> That's right. Brother got some skills. <laughs> he does that. I don't think he's going to have too many critics either when that big man goes to play in. Back to Pennick. Pressure, which they split up the middle and Andrew being shadowed by the free safety there. Lucas for Vanderbilt, but not before he picks up 11 yards on the play. So again, a good pickup by Carolina's offensive line. You see here, this is lead draw play right here. Great job blocking by the offensive line, and Pennick doesn't need much room right there. Big as he is, he's got great explosion. You can see here, they get the, the linebacker sealed. And before anybody can tackle when he's 11 yards down the field, Andrew Pinnock stepping in for the somewhat sick. Derek Watson is having a fine day. You can see there, 121 yards, but look at Watson. 15 carries for a buck, buck 09, and that's not even counting Todd, that 65 yarder he had early that was called back. So both Derek Watson and Andrew Pinnock, for the moment at least, sure that they can hold that up, over 100 yards on the day. I had a little Gamecock trivia. When was the last time uh, two backs rushed for over 100 yards in the same game? Well, since you ask, 1996. And that would be Deuce Staley, Troy Hambrick, and those Clemson Tiggers. Bill Petty now. Oh, a beautiful strike fumble. Willis Ham had it. Do they call it a completion and a fumble? They do. Give it to you on the fumble recovery. So Ham 
from Spring Valley makes his first mistake of the day. And the ball is stripped from him after he catches on the slant play. Let's see here. Again, Bill Petty going back to the slant play. You see here Ham catches the ball, and the cornerback comes in here and does his job of securing the tackle with one hand, stripping the ball out with the other one. But look, looked like he could have possibly bobbled the ball right there and could, could have been incomplete. And, but nevertheless, the officials did not fit that way, Todd. It called it a catch and a fumble. So the defense for Carolina has to come back out on the field as Carolina had a really good drive going for turning it over. Now Ray Perkins, look at that speed to the outside. Jonathan Martin coming over, but not before Perkins picks up 16 yards on the play, and I'm impressed with the young man, Corey. Well, Perkins definitely no relation to, to the other Ray Perkins. It's done a great job of running the football and they've exploited the outside corner side of the Carolina defense you can see here again good attack again again perfect great game right there see we talk this is not the second or third rated rushing defense in the conference that we saw against Arkansas put pressure all over they've been getting we're getting bouncing around a little bit today and they really have and on those corners and you know I don't know what's going on but I know these these next three, three or four weeks are going to have to be a lot better than that. Langston Moore causes pressure, and the ball is picked off. Greg Zolman throws off his back foot after Langston Moore puts pressure on him, and Kevin House comes with his pick. So he barely misses it on the curl route in the last drive, and this time on clear coverage down the middle, gets an interception. Kevin House is a guy who's active. He's got great leaping ability, as you can see here. He's had some great interceptions in the past few weeks. But not so much Kevin House. It's the pressure here by Langston Moore, as you can see right here. And Hutchinson comes in on the blitz. and He throws the ball, leaves it hanging. Look at him. He forces. He doesn't get a chance to set his feet and really throw the football down the field. And my man, I'm going to sing the song again. He's up, Rick. How? <laughs> Kevin House with his second interception of the day. Check that. That's I'm first in first first the day. Second in session by the game time. Excuse me, folks. That's right. That'd be his third, though, on the season so far. Three picks by Carolina. This team came in with 14 picks on the season so far, and Greg Zolman cannot capitalize as he adds to that mark for the second time. Two picks on the day. He does not look like he did in the first half by any means, Corey. That's exactly right. He was 7 of 10 in the first half for 144 yards. Bill Petty getting another chance. Now he's going to rush the football. They fake it to Pinnick, and look at that. There's some speed by Bill Petty. And that's kind of a tweener. I'm going to run out of bounds, or I'm going to lower my shoulder. Oh, I'm laughing because Petty kind of looks, looks like my son CJ running right here on the <laughs> corner. He's slowing down like, okay, don't hit me too hard. <laughs> Petty just run out of bounds, son. Preserve yourself. We've got three big games about. left. Don't do it, Bill. Run out of bounds. He's given up his body a couple times. Remember when he dove yeah. early on in the season? Yeah. That's when I want you to do it. Other than that, just run out of bounds. First and ten, though, as he picks it up there. There's the time of possession at this point. About six minutes to go in this ball game as Andrew Pennick goes up the middle across the 50-yard line. The Vanderbilt defense side just at this point cannot give up these types of games. I mean, you know, even on the the worst play for the game, as far as running the football, Pennick is getting five yards and is really creating easy second and third down conversions for the game top. Yeah, that's a good point. It's first down has been very effective for Carolina. High formation this time. I think that's Watson in the ball game. We'll check the numbers on the play. Slot right, it is there. Call sweep. Got some room. Good block by Brian Scott. Good block by Jamel Kelly. And D. Watson getting to the outside and having some words with Jimmy Williams. There's Coach Lounsbury coming over and slapping uh, Jimmy Williams on the head. Jimmy, you ought not to do that talking, bud, when you're getting ready to lose. And Jamel Kelly just put a big-time block on you. That's 14 yards on the pickup by Derek Watson as the Gamecocks moving on the 35-yard line. Well, I think it was a case of 
Washington uh, Pentagon had Pentagon having a lot of success in there. Like, man, I need to go back in there and get my groove on. That's them. right. They giving up five, six yards a clip. That's the kind of competition you want. First and ten. Derek again. Not much. Get back to the line of scrimmage. He does. He gets one yard on the play. One yard pickup. There's some backs. Picked up some big yards against Bandy Deuce McAllister, the, of course, the second all-purpose back in the conference. Rudy Johnson leading the conference in rushing. He had a big ball game against Ole Miss himself. Ahmad Galloway, we saw him break off a couple big runs against yeah. the Gamecocks in Tuscaloosa. But the Gamecocks the first to have two backs over 100 yards against this Commodore defense. Thunder and light. Second nine. Draw play. Derek Watson. Not much again. Gets one yard on the play. That'll bring up third and eight deep in the Vanderbilt territory. Carolina leading this one, 24 to 14. About three minutes to go in the ball game. This will push them to seven and one on the season should they hold out here. Third and nine though. See if they can pick it up on about the 33 yard line. Four man front. Now pressure from the safety position. He comes, Derek. Breaks the initial line of scrimmage, but can't pick up the distance, so that'll bring it to third and eight on the play. Check that. That'll bring fourth and five now as Lou Holtz is a difficult position as they bring on Tyler Dean with his team leading by ten points. Put them back into deep in the territory. It's snapped inside Rashad Faison. He's going to take it on the face. Inside the 20, inside the 10, touchdown Gamecock. <laughs> so for the second time on the, the afternoon, the Gamecocks go to the razzle-dazzle in the kicking game and get the touchdown. That's the second fake punt on the year so far for the Gamecocks in a total different play. But nonetheless, successful again, 30 yards for a touchdown. I don't know what exactly the Vanderbilt coaching staff is thinking here on this play. First of all, you're down by a country mile. The Gamecocks have the ball blocked. Whoop, whoop. Dan Weaver's attempted extra point is blocked, and that makes it 30 to 14 Carolina. Go ahead, Corey. Back to my point, you know, Gamecocks, first of all, getting back to their old world <laughs> block field, extra points and field goals, but. You know, what could you possibly think of how you, the Gamecocks on the 30-yard line, you know, you're down by country mile. Why would you put a re your return team in the game? I mean, I would think you put your rush team in, you're going to bring everybody. That's a point. good point. I didn't even notice they actually had somebody back there. But Here's the thing. They're playing a oh, they're playing nice great block. Turn. Great blocking, but you can see Vanderbilt's playing a return on this play. And Andre Offing. Good block. That just, doesn't make any sense. Just right. don't make any sense. It's not. That's just bad coaching. You can't fault the players right there. That's just bad coaching on Vanderbilt's part, and great coaching on on our part. I mean, 30 yard line, you're winning. I mean, what do you got to lose? You have nothing to lose. It's not yeah, cost even you if they stop you or don't get the don't get the touchdown or the first down, still well deep into their territory, down 10 points. But that is no longer. They're down 16 points on the ball game. Dan Weaver gets his extra point blocked. With Carolina on the road showing what it takes. That was eight plays, including the fake punt. The 14-12 off the clock. As I mentioned, that was a different setup. Last time they snapped it directly to Faison and went right up the middle on the fake field goal early on in the season. That time they set him up in a different position and crossed Vanderbilt up. Zoman goes back to work to Stricker, but Willie offered right there to put the punishment on him. 
Ohio. I'll tell you, a name we haven't called maybe once today is Shannon Wiley, the human body back. Been kind of quiet today, and maybe that's because the Gamecocks really haven't used their blitz package too much on defense, and been that uh, Vanderbilt has been throwing the ball quite much, but Wiley is a little quiet today. Yep, Shannon has been seen in the backfield a couple times, but just missed those vicious hits that he usually puts on some folks. Sure, a close watch of the uh, film, though, will reveal that he got his legs in. Well, while he's just going to hit somebody, even when he's not making the tackle, he's going to find somebody to throw his body into. He checked the clock there. Just over two minutes to go as they go screen to the left side. Stricker's got a block. And he's going to come up for the first down on the play. 11 yards after the South Carolina penalty where they had 12 men on the field. That's one way to stop somebody. Well, you got to cheat. <laughs> you know, Offense cheating again. Cheating is a part of the game. <laughs> See Stricker there. Had a pretty fine game catching the ball for the Vanderbilt Commodores. And Brass comes back trying to rush the football, but it'll be not for much. We saw the 30-yard punt for a touchdown this season. In the first seven games, Carolina has had 26 plays, which gained 25 yards or more. Eight of those plays have gone for touchdowns. Solman back to the air, and it's almost picked off. Oh, Rashad Faison. would like to have that one back as it was just off his fingertips. Faison has had a fine game. Defensively, he's played very well. Not blitzing as much as, as we've seen in the past, but, you know, played very solidly and uh, goes in on the fake punt and gets himself a touchdown. So They'll bring up third and six, though. Third and five and a half, maybe, for Vanderbilt. pressure. Zolman throws and completes it. My goodness. He gets it to the outside as he's got pressure in his face and at his feet at the bottom before he gets the completion to Robinson for 10 yards on the pickup. So they pick it up. That'll bring him first and 10 now inside Carolina's 40-yard line. Zolman going to work again fast. Is it complete? No. It's thrown right between two Carolina defenders, but Stricker cannot hold on as it's uncharacteristically dropped. It appeared to get through those Gamecocks without being touched. The Vanderbilt Commodores are still fighting, even though this game is way out of reach, but still got to use this time just to practice your offense. You know, if you two-minute offense, you can kind of assimilate your two-minute offense during the situation. He's almost done a great job, but this Fumble. time, yet fumbles, and the Limbo Edwards recovers. Well, we just mentioned it, trying to do something. Maybe that's not possible with Greg Zolman. That's good pressure there. Gamecock faithful like that, and they know this one's about over with now. So they're inside one minute, or right at the one minute mark. Carolina leading 30 to 14. Lou Holt's going to get his 223rd career victory. And Eric Kemry's going to get a couple of snaps here, subbing for Bill Petty. There's your junior. Backup quarterback. Gets his running back into the game. Check that. Who is that? Corey Alexander. No, Trevin Smith. The freshman who cranked out an 80-yard run for a touchdown earlier in the season. Circumstances just like this. There's a penalty on the play. Holding on Carolina. Well, Carolina trying to run out the clock and still doing a little cheating out there, but <laughs> but uh, that's okay at this point. Guys out there trying to get better and get some quality time and trying to run out the clock. <laughs> Try to get them set up. But I don't think that Carolina's in any rush at this point. Fourth quarter, 
leading 30 to 14. There's Trevor Smith, clearly an agile running back, showing some power on the play. Now you start to hear that five or 6,000 faithful for Carolina roaring. They know they get to fly back or drive back in the state of South Carolina with a victory, which they have not done against the Vanderbilt Commodores in the last two years, having lose, lost two games in a row to the Commodores, including that 11-10 loss that we mentioned a year ago. There's your final. Carolina wins it 30-14. to 14. And Corey, the Gamecocks go 7-1 and one on the season. Can you believe it? They have got...